All right, we're back. We're part two. Uh, Mr. Donald Trump Jr., he had to jump off the line. Um, we're back. So we you know, pick- I, I do have a day job, John. I don't just sit there and talk shit online all day long. You know what I mean? So sometimes I've got to do something. Uh, I know when you and I get going, a half an hour turned into 45 minutes pretty quick, and we had to do a part two. So, uh, you know, I, I had to take care of some actual work for a change. But, <laughs> this uh, is work. This know. is real work. Let's let's dive right back. <laughs> let's dive right back in. So we left off, but let's let's move forward. Let's move forward a half step. You know, we, we we've talked about the outdoors. Let's let's get into where we are right now. I think it's it's my contention. I think you, your dad has done a phenomenal job getting out to the people uh, and addressing every day, literally every day. Does it does it at any yeah. point take its toll on him? I mean, do you do you worry about him personally because he's just well, listen, I, he's taking the bullets out there? Well, listen, I, you know, obviously you worry about him is your is your father, but you know, I, I know that there's you know, like we talked about in 2016. I mean, he's the guy I want uh, on the other end of the line when when the phone rings at three o'clock in the morning because I know he's taking the call. I mean, I literally he called me the other night uh, at at midnight and he was still in the Oval Office. Uh, just, you know, sort of check, checking in. And uh, so, I mean, he's working hard, but, you know, he's got the energy to be doing that. It's not going to be, he's not going to be sleeping and say, hey, I'll take the call tomorrow. Uh, he's all over it and, and taking it very seriously. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I wish, you know, others, in, you know, in the media, especially you've seen me, I'm sure, rile about this on social media, but like, you know, there's nothing that he can do uh that that would be right you know when, when he shut down travel from wuhan china which the doctors literally said was the number one thing we could do to slow the spread here you know he's being racist he's xenophobic it's terrible you know so those same people are now saying oh wait, wait he was slow to respond so slow to react i go wait a second he reacted when you guys were still doing impeachment nonsense and you said what he was doing was terrible it was an overstep it was an overreach you know dr bricks uh, all, all these people say, hey, no, no, that was the right thing to do. It was 100%, and, and he was ahead of the curve. Then they say, well, he didn't do enough right. anyway. doesn't matter. They say, no, 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 but we at the CDC, we in the medical community, the WHO, World Health Organization, because they believed China for some stupid reason, like, like you mm. believe China, but they believed the numbers coming out of China because China downplayed it. None of us thought. We thought it was more like SARS, so it wasn't going to be that big a deal, you know. 50,000 people out of, you know, 20, 000, 20 million in Wuhan and 80 million in Hubei province. Uh, we, we sort of figured, hey, no big deal. So every, even the medical community, the CDC and these people and the WHO are, are backing up the claim that, hey, this wasn't what anyone thought it was right. at the time because we were, we don't, now, I think we have to learn from that mistake. I think we have to say, Hey, let's not take anything China says at face value anymore because they're going to spend more time saving face, uh, you know, than anything else. I think, you know, if they spend a little more time trying to feed their population rather than stealing our IP and our military technology and, and, and trying to show the world how great and tough they are, and they spend a little time, a little bit more time trying to feed their population, maybe they wouldn't have to eat bats. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's a novel concept, but maybe if they did that, and, and rather than trying to show the world how macho and smart and tough they are and trying to rule everything, maybe if they fed their population, uh, you know, again, rather than trying to steal our military technology and dominate the world, maybe we wouldn't be in this problem. But that's a story for another day. Mm. So, so the medical community backs them up to this, and then you have every pundit on TV, well, I knew back in December. No, you didn't. You know, but they can get away with saying anything. They didn't know anything in December. You know, you saw Morning Joe the other day. Well, I knew back in early January. It's like, well, it's funny. You didn't mention it on the air until like February 28th. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, w- w- while, the, while the Democrats were running through impeachment, they were taking this so seriously. They were running through impeachment while Trump actually formed the Corona Task Force uh, to get ahead of these things. When he did mm. the action that the doctors acknowledged was the thing to slow the spread, to give us the time that we needed to do these things, he's being racist. When, you know, Obama and Biden uh, in 2009 had the swine flu, they don't talk about that. Literally, tens of thousands of people in America were infected with it. 60 million people end up getting it, but tens of thousands were infected before they even did anything. 
Now, thank God the swine flu was not as deadly as this uh, in terms of potency, uh, in terms of strength, because the delay that they had in getting these things out would have been so much worse. But no one talks about that because the media will do whatever they can to try to hurt Trump, uh, even in this. They will try to do whatever they can for quick bait to create hysteria. You know, they, they got to talk about anything negative to make it worse, which has created panic, which has made more people go out there uh, and, and intermix with other people, creating a, a bigger problem. I mean, it, it, it's sort of a crazy deal. But, you know, the, you know, the task force is doing a great job. I love seeing, you know, sort of the juxtaposition between my father and then obviously the VP Pence is such a great and calming voice in all of this. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dr. Burks and even Fauci, you know, just, you know, He's had a team that's getting it done. I mean, I saw, you know, Gavin Newsom, uh, the governor of California. I mean, he, he said it the other day. He did a he did a podcast with Mark Zuckerberg of all people, mm. um, and he's saying, "Hey, listen, you know, we're in sixty eight or something like that lawsuits with the Trump administration, but like this is not something I'm going to fault them on. Anything we've asked for, we've gotten. The next day, Trump calls me himself at crazy hours to make sure that we're getting what we need. He's like." You know, I'll call balls and strikes, but I can't even fault him on anything that, I mean, that's what I want to see. Right. You know, the media then does the, well, we're going to cut off Donald Trump's press conferences because it's resonating with the American people. They like seeing what he's doing, so we're going to give him no airtime. They don't have a problem putting Andrew Cuomo on the air for a three-hour press conference on national news talking about New York State. Now, New York State's a big state, okay? It, it's the epicenter. But it's not indicative of the rest of the country. So they won't air the task force that is literally dealing with the problem at the federal level from everyone in every state of the country that literally affects every single American. Mm. But those same people that want to cut off that airtime because it's effective have no problem saying, hey, let's give Governor Cuomo unfettered national airtime while he's dealing with a state issue. I mean, this is what we are up against, and it's why we, you know, why we take it so seriously and fight so hard against this mm. nonsense because it is bullshit. At this point, you know, yeah, it's you know, it's one of those things. He just he can never do right, right? You know, no matter what he does, it's never yeah. going to be the right thing. And and I think a lot of us have grown to accept that. But what blows my mind is, is always the 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 inability for the the left to figure out or hasn't figured out. They they come from Hollywood. That there's, there's that Hollywood mentality, but yet. Your dad and, and you and, and everything that you guys have done has blown them away on social, on a platform they should have dominated, right? Well, and that's with the censorship. I mean, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm looking at my, my numbers during this whole time where I know there's a lot more people at home. There's a lot more people staring at social in the middle of the day. And in the last few weeks, I, I, you know, I was like two months ago, I was averaging like 40,000 new followers on Instagram a week ago. You know, I was doing pretty well with it. It's like last week I checked. It's up a little bit this week, but last week I checked, it was like 6,000 new followers. I'm like, I, ha I had like 100 million impressions that week. Like, it's zero, like, statistical improbability. But we're doing well with those platforms despite the censorship, despite sort of the deplatforming that so many conservatives face. I mean, you see this a lot, obviously, in the two-way world. You know, you tag two-way, all of a sudden you see your metrics just drop out of the, you know, the bottom falls out. Uh, you know, you obviously... Anyone who's even a little bit religious or pro-life, you see that. It's just, a, it, I mean, we're doing incredibly on these platforms despite that. And again, I'm not asking for special treatment. I just want to be treated the way that everyone else is, but mm. we're not. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's one of those things. I just pray for the day, and I've said this, I've been vocal about this. I, I think everybody should have to use their real name on social media or use their business, but it gets verified. That's what I believe. No more hiding behind fake accounts. No more. I, I like that. I like that. Cause I mean, I'll, I'll see that, you know, uh, you know, the amount of people that come in and talk shit on my account and I'm fine. I don't care. It's sort of, you know, it's sort of part of the game in, in a way, but it's, it's always the zero followers, zero. Mm -hmm. They're following me just to be able to chime in and they'll, they'll write a long thing. that's all like a dissertation of total bullshit to be able to lie and like hope that it gets a bunch of likes. Like, I don't know. It, it, it's uh, you know, just it's just cowardly in my opinion you know it's just one of those yeah, it's, it's, it's always that guy you know no emoji no picture uh no followers no this that's the guy that's the biggest badass on the internet oh yeah it's it's always the case now coming coming out of this as, as this kind of evolves and plays out how do you see it playing out listen you know, I, again a lot of it sort of I, and to me a lot of it depends 
on you know how we as Americans react. I get it; it's not easy. I, you know, I, I sort of put out the thing: Hey, stay the hell at home. You know, do it. Everyone, right. you know, people have jobs. Here in New York City, stay the hell home. Right. I don't care. You know, if if you're in you know a town where you know there's not even a single case, or in a state where there's three cases, like I don't know, you know, go out there. Wash your goddamn hands. Yeah. Don't touch your face. Stop, you know, uh, hugging random strangers and shaking hands for a little while. Like, it's not the end of the world. You know, be responsible. Um, you know, and, and I think you know, the more disciplined we are, uh, the better the response is going to be. So, I mean, we very much are guiding our own destiny. And I saw, you know, the kids on spring break, uh, you know, a couple, you know, it's like, oh, uh, guys, come on. Because guess what? They have a good chance of dying, but guess what? They could be a carrier that's asymptomatic. They go home. They get their grandmother sick. The grandmother doesn't know. The grand- you know, we can guide our own destiny to this to an extent, but I also, listen, I get it. Uh, we're still Americans. We still expect that freedom. It's not like communist China where they say, hey, get in your apartment. If you come out, we're going to shoot you in the face. Here, mm. we have a curfew. Okay, well, what are you going to do? Write me a ticket? Like, it, it, it's, a, it's a little different. Uh, in America that way. So we have to have, you know, that same uh, discipline. And the, the more we do that, in my opinion, the, you know, the, the faster we get out of this, because that's how you do it. I mean, if everyone could realistically lock themselves away for, uh, you know, three weeks, you're fine. Now, I, I understand that's not a reality of the world in which we live, so it's not much point in talking about it, but but we can do a lot about this. But to the point of the spring breakers, you know, if you put, uh, you know, 42 year old Don back into 20 year old Don. <laughs> Guess what? I I was still probably going on spring break. Uh, I, I just, you know, I just said, Hey, you, you say there's a 2% chance I'm going to die. Oh, no brainer. I'm rolling the dice. Like, let's go. We're going to have fun instead. Like, you know, so I, I get it's not, it's so much easier said than done. Uh, but I do think this is sort of over the seriousness. So we, we should take it as such. And the better we can do with that, uh, you know, uh, it, it's better. What do you think of the run on toilet paper? <laughs> if that makes you sleep at night, right? Yeah, you know, I'm not so worried about toilet paper. I think there's alternatives. I got plenty of t-shirts over the years that I could probably use in a worst case scenario. You know, I think I think the people who made the run on ammo uh, probably a little smarter than toilet paper. That, oh my god! In the end. In the end, that's probably going to get you more of what you need than toilet paper. But, you know. Yeah, I think Brent from Gallo. I'm dead, but my butt is, I'm dead, but my ass is really clean, John. It's, uh, you know. I think Brent from Gallo Tech was sending a roll with every order. (laughs) I think he was doing that. I like that. Yeah. No, it's, you know, it's interesting when you have these these situations. And in my lifetime and yours, you know, we saw 9-11, there was probably about 10 days that America really wasn't working, you know, at least in the conventional sense. You know, there was some time lost there. Um, This is unprecedented what we're going through. There's no rule book for it. So, I, you know, my hat's off. No, there isn't. And it affects the entire, 9-11 affected the entire country emotionally. Uh, you know, but, you know, the reality is it disrupted Wall Street more than anything in terms yeah. of that. Like, you know, there was there was nothing that wasn't going to, uh, you know, change in, in, a, in a local shop other than sort of the emotional component of it. This is very different. I mean, when, when you're telling someone in, you know, literally it could be in the sticks, hey, you don't leave your apartment, don't leave your house, you can't go out there, you can't do basic services. I mean, it's a whole different thing. And that's why I'm just thankful that my father's the guy at the helm of these things. You know, I, I don't want a Joe Biden who you know doesn't know what state he's in 50 percent of the time. I mean, he's literally his plan, if he can remember it, which is the other. I mean, he had a two point plan the other day. He gets on a live podcast, live telecast thing, and he couldn't remember the two points. You know, and I go, you know, after they're like, he would like to meet with Donald Trump. I go, what, what's he going to talk about? What not to do uh, after the way they handled swine flu, which no one talks about conveniently. The media doesn't. I mean, they won't even talk about this. It's like, I don't think he brings all that much to the table. Beyond that, the ideas that he has come up with are things, I mean, the other day on TV, the other day, like this week, he literally went on TV, they should form a task force. He goes, they did that in January. I mean, the vice president, you should know something about vice president since you were one, is literally in charge of it, and they're doing daily briefers. This guy doesn't know where he is. So thank God he is not in charge, because that, that would be really scary. I want the guy that's got energy. I want the guy that's willing to fight and push back. I want him in charge. And and guess what? When, when we come out of this thing, and we will, 
I want the guy that built the greatest economy America has ever known to be in charge of getting that going again. That's yeah, what I want. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny. I asked uh, 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 Congressman Gates the other day. I said, I said, w- where, where is he right now? And he goes, I don't know. He's probably some, you know, figuring out what state he's in. It's it, he actually, and I said this, and I'm being, you know, painfully honest. You give everybody the benefit of the doubt, and I know you do too, deep down inside. I, I look, do. No, listen, yeah. Like, like I said, hey, I complimented the governor of California five minutes ago. You yeah. Know what I mean, like, I, I'll call balls and strikes. Yeah. He, but like, honestly, he scares no me lately. On TV. No one on TV right now, John. And, and by the way, I, I did it. I, I said this on you know, social a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you you want to do the test, you know, the Biden test. If you look at Joe Biden 25 years ago, he's in the Senate for 50 years. So, like, you know, he's talking about how government has failed you. Yeah, he could be part of the problem. I mean, he's only been there for 50 years. But, like, look at him 10, 15 years ago and play a video of him today. It's not the same guy. Okay, if Donald Trump made the mistakes that Joe Biden is making on a daily basis, not remembering what state he is, not remembering what job he's running for, not remembering what position he can appoint someone for, uh, forgetting two talking points of a two-point statement. I mean, two. Like, mm. It's not like, hey, I had 39 points to get through and I forgot number 27. Like, he had two and he forgot them both. Uh, you know, it's there was not one television psychologist that wouldn't get on the air and say, if Donald Trump did that, he has lost his mind. He has dementia. It is all over. 25th amendment. Let's get him out of there. Not one, but they won't say that about him because they're doing whatever they can to protect the left. And and that's the sad thing is it's even in an issue like this, even in something so it's still a total partisan hackery. Um, You know, you, you see it on the networks, you see it on the news, you see what I'm talking about when they're like, We'll give the governor of a state all the airtime he wants, and that's not an issue. But if Trump is doing well because people it's resonating with the American people that he's he's fighting and pushing back on this thing, uh, we got to stop giving him airtime. It's Mm. bullshit, John. Yeah, Doctor Stephen Smith got on Fox last night, and he said he thinks the hydroxychloroquine would would be a a a game changer. Um, Chloroquine would be a game changer, and he and he thinks we're, we're we're nearing the end by being able to treat this. And I, if he's correct, and I mean he's a much more accomplished guy than I in in uh, infectious diseases. I don't know, you know, anything about infectious diseases. He says, you know, he thinks we're at the beginning of the end once they speed this up. You know, well, yeah, I, I don't know more than anyone else. Yeah, I, 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 I sort of like I said, I, I spoke to my dad for the first time in three weeks the other night at midnight when he called. Like, like I, I'm sort of. You know, they're, they're drinking from a fire hose, obviously. They got a lot on their plate. They don't, hey, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, he's not one for small talk that way, so I, I've stayed totally out of it. But, like, you know, again, I think that's right. The results seem promising. And that's when, like, my father goes, hey, this seems promising. Isn't that great? Are you giving Americans a false sense of hope? Right. Like, are you kidding? Like, are you joking? You know, but they don't talk about, you know, the governor of Michigan banned the, the, you know that drug you can't use it now they reverse the decision oh oh that's wonderful you know some of these people are literally doing like just whatever trump does let's just do the opposite no one's going to hold us accountable if we're wrong it's totally acceptable to do that and it's just it's it's bullshit there's no other way to put it yeah it's 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 sad too yeah it's sad because this is a real deal this is something that is real and it's still being you know, utilize that way. I mean, I, I'm sitting at home now, you know, I'll joke around on social media about it and stuff like that. And I'll put up some beans because I'm bored out of my mind. Uh, but, but the reality is, you know, to see that thing from professional organizations that are supposed to at least be doing this. And, you know, when CNN can't call balls and strikes, but the governor of California who were in 68 lawsuits with meaning the administration can like something's missing. So wow. you know, I'm glad to see that it exists with some of them, but it, not with enough. Given, given the severity of the situation. On a positive note, what I was saying the other day to a couple of people is the innovation that'll come out of this. The, uh, oh, yeah. the, the ability to, um, to, you know, come up with ideas, uh, just the advancements in sterilization, all the different things. I think that's yeah. going to be one of the most amazing things coming out of this. Uh, and we won't well, know until the dust Listen, settles. We're going we're gonna to learn a lot. And, but I think, honestly, the biggest thing we can learn is, but guess what? Trump was right in 2016 mm. when he said, hey, we have to bring back American manufacturing. We have to control our supply chains. We have to be able to control our borders. I mean, if there's one thing that this lesson has taught us, in my opinion, just already, is that he was actually right. 
You know, Joe Biden's on the record. China's not our competition. Well, it's easy. His son is taking a, took a billion five from the Chinese government for his fund as a journeyman investor that no one had ever heard of. A billion five. So for perspective, for your listeners who don't know anything about the fund world, most people are paid on funds on like a two and 20 model. 2% management fee, 20% of the upside if you make money. 2% on $1.5 billion is $30 million a year in fees. Okay. Joe Biden's family is very well incentivized to make sure we never screw with China. Okay, we never yeah. do anything with China. He's on the record saying they're not our competition. That's ridiculous. They're not our competition. Are you kidding me? They lied about the statistics. They did everything they could to save face to try to like we discussed this earlier, but you know, all of these things and Joe Biden's sitting there being a cheerleader and you're watching the media take the communist regime's talking points. They accused American soldiers. I mean, this is like the Ministry of Information, not like some random dude on Twitter, like a verified Chinese government official say, well, we think it could have been from the U.S. government. Isn't that a shit? Look at, look at what we're doing. The World Health Organization is running with the Chinese talking points now. Our intelligence agencies, which I'm going to say, you know, probably not exactly pro-Trump people, given what we've seen over the last four years. Even they're saying, yeah, China lied to us about it. Now it's cricket. But for um, two months, the media is running with the Chinese government's propaganda talking points because they hurt Trump. Yeah. I mean, that's the state in which we're in. But in the end, the MAGA agenda was right all along. Mm. The fact that the Chinese government, they sat there. Well, you know, we don't like what you're saying, so we may withhold antibiotics. And guess what? We make all of your antibiotics now. So we may withhold it and not give it to your sick people. If we don't reassess our relationship and the, the, the dependence that we have on countries like that. We're morons. We're morons. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's been interesting. because it's, it's not the way I'd want to prove the point, obviously. Uh, but my father was right all along about these things. We need to do some American manufacturing. We have to control our own destiny. We cannot be dependent on those who are willing to lie to the world by lying to the world, they created a pandemic that's 10x worse than it could have been had everyone been properly prepared, had everyone been able to lock down uh, the way. And, you know, the media was, oh, you didn't do it right. It's like, well, our, the World Health Organization is saying these things and saying that, oh, yeah, we don't think it commutes easily between people. Oh, so, so it's Trump's fault that China lied. The medical community took that information, agreed, but it's Trump's fault for not somehow anticipating it. I mean, it's it's mind-boggling how insane this is, but this is 2020. This is where we are. Yeah, it, it's bananas how they spin it and how they, they react to it. And, you know, I mean, you're in a tough spot because I, I try to explain to people all the time, you're not, uh, uh, you don't hold a position officially and yeah. you love the campaign and you get to you know participate in the fight which is the beauty of who you are and what you're about now at the end of the day it's one of those situations where you know you're sifting through the weeds and kind of figuring out what the best messaging is and how to help and participate do you ever just get so frustrated that you just lose your mind or you need to kind of tune out what how do you how do you you know you go out and you hunt and you hit the outdoors but do you ever just kind of turn the phone off and have to reboot yourself yeah, I'm pretty good at being able to do that when I'm in the outdoors when I'm doing those things. Uh, you know, that, that's the kind of time I'm able to do it. But, like, you know, the reality is this. There's so few voices uh, on our side that have a platform, right? It's not that easy to create a big platform. It's not that easy to get it, especially when you deal with sort of the censorship that our side has faced. So, you know, I sort of view it as, as almost a responsibility to make sure to get the other side out. And, you know, even if that means I'm getting a bunch of arrows thrown at me, I'm willing to take them. Uh, you know, it's why I fight for, you know, the two way. It's why I fight for sort of, you know, the hunting stuff. It's why I fight for, you know, so many things uh, that would be much easier for me as a business guy from New York just to be able to say, you know what, screw it. Let someone else fight that battle. But the reality is there's not that many people willing to fight those battles. There's the ones that are oftentimes don't have a platform or the ability to get that voice or that message out there. So, uh, you know, I, I, I do it because I have to. I don't have a choice. You, know, you have to stand up for what you believe in. I have to, you know, as I, as we kind of, you know, come up on time, because I don't want to keep you all day. If you had to have one position or run for one position, what would it be? Oh God. Come on. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I, the problem is if I answer this one, he's running. I, I, I have, you know, I, I have no intentions of doing anything like that. You know, it's interesting. I probably had no intentions of even being in politics or, or getting all that involved. I've obviously been pretty 
a conservative my whole life. Uh, but you know, this, you know, being out there, being able to sort of be the guy and volunteer, Hey, I'm going to go to the places where my father can't get, I'm going to go do the, you know, the rallies where he can't go. I'm going to actually spend time with my friends, uh, in middle America, not just sort of pay them a passing glance, uh, every couple of years during an election cycle. But you, you know, you know, this as well as anyone. I mean, I, I got friends in all those places and I, you know, so for me, you know, I, I view it as a responsibility to do that. So I'll stay involved, you know, some way, uh, shape or form. I don't know if I, I, I don't think that'd be as a candidate, at least not, not any time in the near future as a, you know, as a father with five young kids um, and, and all of that. But I'm going to keep fighting for, you know, this cause because I, I, I do believe in it. Now, uh, you know, there, there are positions that are sort of cool. I mean, you know, obviously with my hobbies and my passions, the interior uh, Department of the Interior is pretty, pretty cool just because. You know, big believer in our public lands. That's and, the past. Uh, make, making sure we, we have, you know, the the access for that for our sportsmen, for uh, for, for everything and, and preserving that. I mean, it, it's why the American traditions of the great outdoors sort of exist. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a cool, uh, that would be a cool job in a certain way. Um, you know, but as far as like running for an elected office, I have, you know, no idea, no plans, no intentions. Uh, my only goal right now is to fight for 2020. Uh, make sure we keep this thing going, grow the economy again, uh, and, you know, get some common sense uh, back into Washington because it's the only thing not so common there. You know, you do a great job kind of, you know, fighting the battle. I, the only thing I wonder about is how you would feel about being in the seat, and that's kind of, you know, what I think about with you yeah. sometimes. Yeah, no, hey, make no mistake, there's a big difference. Uh, between being like, I like, you know, I love the fight aspect of it. You know, I, I like the campaigning. I like getting out there. I like shaking it up. I like mixing it up. Like, you know, the day job is a whole different deal, right? I mean, you got to be able to do both. Uh, there's no question I could do the day job, in my opinion, and for some of these things, I just don't know that I'd want to. Um, and you know, and that, that's something that would, that would have to take time. Like I, I believe so strongly in it. Maybe it'd be worth it. I, I just got to figure out for, for me and for my life, if it's something I'd want to you know, ever do. Uh, and you know, I, I, I don't know the reality. I've been too busy, too preoccupied too you know, sort of just solely focused on 2020, um, and continuing this, um, to, to even really give it much more, much more thought than that. So, you know, that's, that's my only goal and that's my only ambition right now. I think it's that, I think you're on the right path. I think, uh, you know, the secretary of interior position is perfect for you. I'm going to put words in your mouth and that's that's what I think, but well, and Dave Bernhardt's doing a great job. So, like, I, I, I you know, I, I, I love what they're doing. I mean, they opened up, you know, 1.8 million uh, new acres of access that were previously inaccessible to, you know, just uh, Americans uh, for for hunting and recreation like that. They're working on a few million more acres, and you know, you have the usual groups out there. They're selling off public land. Just not true. But you know, well funded sort of left-wing pretend hunting organizations are, you know, running with talking points that are nonsense. Oh, there's some of these companies sort of, you know, uh, the, the greenie companies cloak as something else. They run with it, spend lots of money trying to pretend uh, that something that isn't happening is happening, uh, you know, rather than talking about the facts. So, you know, uh, you know, m- maybe you need a voice like mine to be able to hammer those points home and call bullshit when it's bullshit. But, uh, you know, in, in terms of leadership there, uh, you know, I think Dave Bernhardt's doing an incredible job right now and, uh, you know, getting things done for, for Americans, for sportsmen, for, for, the, for the national parks, for everything. I mean, they're, they're doing some pretty unprecedented things, um, and, and that's important. Yeah, I think it's more, I, I, you know, I think it's just more about uh, bringing awareness to the seat because I feel like the the Secretary of Interior position is one of the most underappreciated positions underappreciated secretary positions and I yeah. think I think the one thing you you know and everybody's done a great you know done a great job down the line and I think great people have been in that seat but part of it is is nobody knows who it is it's kind of like a bear shitting in the woods you know it's you got to get yeah. somebody in there that can bring a lot of awareness to it and lend a lot of uh, uh, conversation and dialogue and credibility and I know that that's something that's passionate 
you know, to you, if it plays out, if there is that opportunity, yeah. I know you'll get chastised and criticized, be, you know, because, oh, nepotism, or, oh, this, and like, at the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy was the damn attorney general, so, you know, give me a break on that, and, and you know, you didn't go take a $1.5 billion, uh, million dollar uh, a job from Burisma or anything like that, so, you know, it's, to me, six and one half dozen another go crowd. Well, but, it just, again, it, it doesn't matter what Kennedy did. It doesn't matter what a Clinton would do. It doesn't matter what a Biden would do. You know, and they have a D next to their name. They're Democrats, so mm. they can get away with, with, with so much more. That's why I, mean, I literally the other day on Axios, I was like, I go, you know what? Everyone talks about, oh, the Trump kids are getting so much from the president. I'm like, Jesus Christ, we shut down our international business. We won't do new deals going forward to avoid the kind of impropriety that everyone else on the Democrat side seems perfectly fine taking advantage of. Like, we literally... John, we were international business people, uh, you know, be, before we did this. That's actually what we did. And we gave all of that up. So I said, hey, I will challenge Hunter Biden to a debate. I'll let one of those lefties, you know, it was Jim Vandehei at the time, you know, who's no one's going to be confused for a conservative. I said, I'll let you moderate it. I'll give you my tax returns, full disclosure, everything you want. Hunter Biden does the same. And, and, and we can debate on a national stage. You'll Frickage. never see it. Yeah, you'll never Frickage. see it. I'll do it. Hey, you, you want to talk about grab? You want to talk about us doing it? At least look at the other side, but they don't. They won't even look at it. What do you mean? It's totally legit that what he did. If I did, if I took $1.5 from China, they would lose their goddamn minds, John. Yeah. $1.5. Hunter Biden takes $1.5 billion. Totally normal. Totally normal. It's wonderful. So. I've offered up the debate. The offer stands, but I have a feeling they're not going to do shit. No, you're never going to see that happen, and and I wish it would. It'd be great streaming shit. Oh. I, I'd buy it if it was on pay per view. Uh, uh, hey, listen, most of these people there, uh, Donald Hunter Biden is a Yale lawyer. He would destroy Donald Trump Jr., who can't even read. I go, okay, then you should do the debate. You should put the nail in my coffin. Uh, you should take me out. Because if, if I'm so incompetent and he's so brilliant and so deserving, then they should be so willing to do this debate. But they're not, obviously. No. So no, it'll never it'll never happen. Listen, you, you've said so much. I mean, we've done back to back forty minute segments, but you and I could go on and on for days. I I, I have yeah. to ask one more question because you go to the shows all the time and this is more of a fun. We'll end on a fun note. You go to the shows all the time. You participate in all this stuff. What is you're, when you go to these shows and you look around and, and you participate, what, what what do you enjoy more? Do you enjoy walking SCI? Is it, you know, NRA? Is a shot? You know, where do you kind of really enjoy bumping into the people and having the conversations? Is it on the campaign trail? Where is it? What, what, is, what for you brings you home? Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. I mean, you know, you, you've been with me on the, the floor of some of the shows, All right? All the time, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's an honor that so many people would love to shake my hand and have a 10 minute conversation and take a selfie, but it also stops me from being able to see the people I know there and want to, like, it's sort of hard to do it. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I don't love that. I, lo I do like meeting the people on the campaign trail, but like sometimes you also want to have a life. So if I go to the shows and you know that I know a lot of people in the industry, you know, they're legitimate friends of mine, right? Yeah. Um, so I want to be able to see those people. So I'll go and walk. You know, I can't go four feet on the floor of the SHOT Show without having to take another selfie. I mean, uh, you know, what was it? And uh, SHOT Show two years ago is the last time I went because I just couldn't even couldn't even go. I, was just, it, it, I took 1,500 selfies by lunchtime of day one. Yeah. Uh, my, my guys on my detail literally had I was a with you. Yeah, I'm just, with you. It was, it was brutal. Like, you know, and it's cool. Like, I, I don't, I, yeah, you know me. I'm pretty good about taking the time to take a picture and to do this. But, like, you know, there also comes a time where you like, I just got to, like, I want to see the people I want to see. Like, I came all the way to Vegas to be able to do X, Y, Z. And, you know, I could take a thousand selfies. But if I then say, hey, guys, I got to go. That guy that's a thousand and one that didn't get it. Oh, you're an asshole. Yeah. You're like, the... Dude, I just spent two hours taking selfies. It sucks. It's yeah. not what I want to be doing. It's not fun. It's a, uh, you, you know what I mean? It's I a... do it because it, it's, it's cool that they care. And it's like, I get it. Um, but, you know, there also comes the time where you want to be able to live your life. Uh, and you, like I said, you've seen this with me, what, five different times probably? At oh, various yeah. Days. I mean, I'm always you shepherding. Know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it, 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 it's for, I mean, shit, you, you've run picks for me a couple of times. Where of it's like, okay, I got to, you know, pick and roll just so, you know, start moving head down and just disappear. I'm, uh, I'm used Just to, to be it. able to shake the crowd. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's amazing. You know, it's and amazing. that guy's always, that last guy's always, no, 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 just one more. I go, no, no, it's one more for you. 
but 10 people see you taking it. Now I got to take 10 more. It, it, it's never one more for me. You know, it's, you know, it's bittersweet because, you know, you, you kind of in a roundabout way are giving access, but at the same time, you just kind of want to be a, uh, you want to take a look at the shows. You want to see some of the innovation. Like I said, cause you know, there's, there's sort of no way to answer that without sounding a bit like a jerk, but like, like I said, it, it is an honor that they want to do that. There, there's also a part of me that, that I am there, not just to walk around. Like I'm there to catch up with, you know, the NRA show. I, I, I'll, I, I'll know three quarters. I'll know someone at three quarters of the booth there that are actual buddies of mine. People I communicate with, people I've shot with, people I've competed with. You know, and I want to see that. I'll be in a conversation. You've seen it. I'm, people are just sticking cameras in front of my face, like putting their head over my shoulder and snapping a selfie. They don't ask. They don't, you know. Uh, like I make myself pretty available and pretty accessible. I think I'm pretty cool about it, but uh, oftentimes the boundaries aren't respected on the other way. We're just like, I also have to be able to have a level life, you know? Yeah, I know. So, and, and even just walking around like, with you, sometimes I'm like, I just want to catch up with my friend. Like, you know, like I'm just walking correct. and we're yeah, just, no, I could answer the question by saying, no, it's wonderful. I love every aspect of it. You know, that's sort of the stock politician's answer, but I'm giving you sort of the real answer. Yeah. The inside. Which is, yeah. Like, I appreciate it. It's an honor. I also want to be left the hell alone every once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, you just want to do your thing. And, and it's it's funny because, uh, you know, NRA show got canceled this year, as we know. But I was talking with a, a couple of the guys over there, and you were going to speak at it. And, I, you know, I was talking to them, and I was like, well, geez, I'm like, if there's a slot, I'd love to intro- introduce him. And they're like, oh, so many people want to do that, you know. And I'm like, but does so many of them actually know him? Did anyone actually talk to him? I'm like, you know, it yeah. gets, it, it's, it's like one of those things, like it, it, it's frustrating, you know, in so many, in so many aspects, but it, it's the, uh, it, it's the ability to reach and touch so many people, but you, I know you, you, you love the conversation and you'd rather sit and have a conversation with some of these people than just make it about yeah. a selfie because a selfie is such a passing fleeting thing. You know, you'd almost rather pick yeah, five well, I, people and sit down it. with them. Maybe I'm naive, but I'm always like, what are you going to do with that? So, like, who right. like, yeah, who like what are you going to do with yeah, it? Exactly. Like, you know I know where you go, know, yeah. If you'll get an extra like on the gram, like, who gives a shit? Like, you know, like I don't know. I, I would rather actually try to get to know someone. And, and it's funny, I also, like, there's sort of, uh, you know, on, on the floor of the shows, it's, I, I actually am probably much more accommodating to the regular guy than I am the, well, I'm a big donor of XYZ. It's like, I don't care, dude. Like, you know, the, the regular guy, I think it, it sort of feels like it means more to them. Uh, you know, sometimes you go to the big sort of fundraising events at those things and hey, Don, I'd like to take a selfie with you. It's like I'm sitting there, like literally like halfway in there putting a fork in my mouth, like trying to eat for the first time all day. And it's like, OK, OK, take the selfie here. Quick, I'll, yeah. No, 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 no. I'd like you to walk across the room mm. to come to do it at my table. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you came to me to take a selfie and you want me to then get up, walk across the room, which means I have to take 50 selfies on the way there and back. Uh, to be able to, like, no, man, it's just not how it works anymore. And, and you should probably know better, you know? Right. So I, I think I'm probably a lot more, you know, a, a lot more accommodating to some of, you know, just you know, the regular guy that's a follower, that's a fan, that's sort of into it. Not the guy that's trying to get me there to, you know, to go to his table for a corporate selfie. Uh, you know, and, and uh, the, the funny ones are, hey, okay, so I, I've even done it. Go, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. Well, here's my team of 25. Great. Okay, let's take the picture. Oh. Okay, so John, why don't you get in line? No, no, no. I'm not taking 25 individuals. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we'll take the group shot. Like, I, you got me to do this. I mean, there's some people that are, you know, some pretty ballsy ass yeah. considering. You know what I mean? You're, you're insanely gracious about it. It's funny. Uh, and I always tell guys, I've, I was talking about this with, with Cutler, with O'Hearn, with a bunch of guys out there. I said, it's amazing how, you know, you're able to smile and do it. But yeah, there comes a point at the shows because it's such a fire hose. You have to, you have to manage it and you have to shepherd and you have to push it through. And that's why, you know, sometimes someone has to be uh, uh, the guy. And, you know, a lot of times I'm, you know, myself, Brendan Bird, certain people are thrust <laughs> into that position where you're just moving it and shepherding it along because because, you know, when you go to these things, you want to see some of the brands and some of the people that you that you love. And yeah, I, hey, listen, relationship I, I'm really into this stuff. So I, I want you know, if someone actually came up with something new. Guess what? I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't get you know, on a plane and fly four hours to not see anything and just take selfies like, you know, so you, you got to be able to sort of it's sort of a fine line of you know understanding that, hey, I've put myself out there and it's an honor. Uh, that there's guys that want to do that too. Like, okay, I also have to be able to live a little bit of my own life and and not just, you know, be a prop. Yeah. And and it's funny because if maybe if you put a Biden costume on, nobody would want to take a picture with you or or better, a Beto O'Rourke mask. 
We can get you, yeah, we can get you a beta beta beta. Oh, no, but that might be a risk. <laughs> well, you, you, hey. You've seen it. How many times have I had to like duck into the Kuyu booth and be like, "Hey guys, just give me a hat. Just give like, me a costume. Give me, give me a hat and a camo jacket." The, because like, you know, uh, I I just need to be able to you know blend a little bit because uh, it's just too much. It would be amazing if they could develop crowd camo. Yeah, we, we should talk yeah, exactly. to him about that. We should talk to Bernsey about that. Like, you blend in with the crowd. Yeah, like yeah, um, yeah, or, there's got to be some top or secret. Some sort of, yeah, you know, other defensive mechanism. Get like a skunk, <laughs> skunk. skunk deodorant that someone's gonna be like, oh yeah, I don't want to be around him at all. Like yeah, we, we gotta come up with something good for that. What's what you know? What's that smell? Oh, Donnie hasn't showered in a week. <laughs> don't get it's, it's been a week. <laughs> yeah, he's on. Yeah, I'm he's, going on a. I'm after we get through with Corona, I'm going on a non hygiene uh, binge so that uh. Yeah, you keep you people know, away. I, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be amazing. You know, I can't, uh, I, I can't, it's, I can't take more of your time. You've been insanely gracious and we'll do it again. I mean, it, it's so much fun yeah. just getting a rap with you and, you know, people think, you know, I, you, you know, you talk about the crowds and everything. I was saying one day to Kim, you know, I get an insane amount of asks from people as you can imagine. And I always say to you, you know, you see one tenth of one twentieth of the asks that, that people ask for. But I, I personally think you're insanely gracious with your time and anybody who's been uh, around you or spend time with you at the shows or at any of the events yeah it's ridiculous how gracious you are and and in how much time you and even your family spend even that time with Haley Deegan with the helmet you know you seek out you know she wanted an autograph you yeah. make it happen you make an insane amount of, of of good happen that brightens up people's day and whether it's toilet paper or it's a picture with you or whatever it is that makes people feel comforted hey so be it you know you do your best to accommodate and and you do it with a smile which is which is crazier than me because I'm much more volatile than that i could i could never do it but my hat's off to you for that all you know always i appreciate it buddy well, thank you very much johnny good talking to you Have always. Fun and, uh, we'll talk soon absolutely soon. see you brother Later. all right there he is the one and only donald trump jr uh you know Awesome time, part two. Uh, head over to uh, Volcourts and Firearms. Go check them out. And head over to www.johnbartoloshow.com and check out some of the sponsors. Uh, insanely gracious with his time. You know, we did back-to-back 40-minute segments. I can't thank Donnie enough. Amazing. And uh, really appreciate it. We're out. <laughs>